I got top surgery 10 months ago. And while it has radically improved my quality of life and dramatically decreased my dysphoria, which I am very grateful for, there have been some hiccups that have made recovery much more difficult than anticipated. Hey everyone, welcome to Mav Magic. My name is Mav and on this channel I like to help you find your truth and find your magic. I make content about my spiritual journey, my non-binary identity, and whatever else I want to talk about. So if that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and subscribe to see more of my content. So today I want to talk about top surgery. I wore this button down shirt that's like inappropriately unbuttoned. Way too many buttons are unbuttoned because I just want to show off my chest and we're going to talk about top surgery today. I'm going to talk a little bit about some things that I didn't prepare for, some of the lessons that I've learned, and some of the things that you can do to help yourself prepare if you are going to have top surgery. This is also a useful video if you've already had top surgery and you're just healing and you're just learning about what to expect further along in your recovery and healing journey. The first difficulty or thing that I really didn't expect was to have my my surgery changed last minute. I've talked about this story in the past, I think in my very first video after my surgery, where I talked a little bit about what happened. So when I met with my doctor, I really thought we were on the same exact page, but on the day of surgery, he came in and was like, all right, are you ready for a double incision? And I was like, I thought we were gonna do the buttonhole and then it became a whole thing. So my surgeon was worried about the fullness of my chest that would be left over because I had a lot of chest tissue and this surgery leaves a lot of chest tissue behind. And then he was also worried about aesthetics, just making it look masculine and yeah, just making it look masculine. And the thing is I was worried about those things too. I didn't want to have the appearance of breasts at all. So I asked him to leave the room for a little bit and I called up my wife and we had a discussion. And in that conversation, I really was like, yeah, I might lose nipple sensation, but I would feel really uncomfortable if I was left with too much chest tissue. So I made a decision at that moment to just let's go for double incision and deal with it afterwards. Like I said, I was really anxious about losing nipple sensation because it was important to me, but I figured that it would be a, a reasonable sacrifice um, to get this surgery. I really feel like I made the right choice for me um, in the moment, right? And right after my surgery, I was still healing. I remember reading a story from this guy who had had top surgery. He had the, 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 the kind of incision that I was going to have or the kind of surgery that I was going to have. And he had to get a revision because he was left with way too much chest tissue, still had to wear a binder and all of that stuff. So I felt really grateful that I chose to go with double incision and had, didn't have to deal with any of that afterwards. And honestly, while in that beginning stage while I was healing, I really didn't think about my nipples at all. But after a little while, like seven months or so, that's when I started kind of noticing that it was gone and I was feeling kind of disappointed, a little bit sad. Which brings me to my next topic. Number two, I wasn't prepared to lose nipple sensation. I have to be really honest and let y'all know that losing nipple sensation was, was devastating for me. And honestly, y'all, there were days where I would just beat myself up because I was like, what if I just went with the other procedure and just dealt with having a bigger chest than I had, than I had thought that I would still have nipple sensation. And I kind of go over and over and over that day in my head thinking if I made the right choice. Um, and I know there were other concerns. If I had gotten the buttonhole procedure, there was a possibility of me losing a nipple, like nipple death was more of a possibility with that surgery. So I know that I made the right choice. But honestly, y'all, there were just so many what ifs that were going on in my head. I kept going back and forth and feeling frustrated. And at the end of the day, I just realized that it was, it's just hard to, to deal with this kind of a change. And there's a lot of adjustments that I've had to make since losing nipple sensation. And I do have to say that 10 months out now, I have some very minimal sensation in my nipples, which I'm happy about. And I'm hoping that um, as I continue to heal and the nerves continue to reconnect, that things will start to feel a lot better. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that on top of the lack of nipple sensation, there's also with the scar tissue, there's also a kind of hypersensitivity in the nipples. So sometimes if like my shirt rubs over them in a weird way, it feels very, very off 
and very odd, very odd sensation. Um, so there's that. There's a lot of odd sensations that I'm learning to get used to. The other thing about my nipples is that they are half brown and half pink. Um, one of them is almost completely brown and the other one is like half brown, half pink. And that is kind of odd. Um, I would like to get my pigmentation back and I'm very excited for where that happens. Um, I think on the one, it'll probably all come back, but the other one I might need to get tattooed, and so I'm gonna pursue that uh, maybe in a little bit. The third thing that I wasn't prepared for were a ton of sensory weirdness. And kind of the biggest problem that I have with this is th these are things that I experienced and things that I read about like on Reddit and other platforms, but my surgeon really didn't prepare me for any of this. Being unprepared really scared me and freaked me out because there were all these things happening that caused me some distress and it really caused me to kind of doubt myself and doubt my decision because I was dealing with all of these issues. One of the bigger problems is that it made integrating myself after the surgery a little bit more difficult because of these unexpected things. So there are two different sensation or sensory things that I wanted to talk about. The first one, and trigger warning with words here, but is a phantom breast syndrome. So this includes painful and non-painful sensations in the tissue that is no longer on your body. For me, it looked like these odd sensations around my chest that just didn't make any sense. And then on other occasions, it would be like I would expect for my chest to be there and it wouldn't be there and it would kind of like freak me out for a second, honestly. And it's also important to know that phantom, that this syndrome uh, comes from surgical trauma and this is treatable uh, if you have a really bad case of it. I don't have any phantom pain, it's just weird phantom sensations. They're not awful right now. Um, so I'm not going to really do anything about them. Uh, but if you are experiencing pain, please talk to your surgeon. There are treatments for this condition. Hey there, this is Editing Mav. I just wanted to pop in and say that I actually do use massage whenever I have a phantom sensation. It seems to help my body like remember what's exactly on my body. Okay, bye. The other sensory adjustment that I had to make was adjusting to the loss of weight or the loss of pressure on my chest. I'm learning that I find that I do really well when I'm kind of wrapped up and I feel secure. And I really didn't know this, but it seems like my chest, like the weight of my chest seemed to add some of that. And then also binding my chest really just kind of made me feel all wrapped up and cozied up. And now it's like my body just feels like exposed almost. One other thing that was really weird is the area that used to be my under boob is, is now exposed to my shirt. So I'll feel this area and it's a, it's a really sensitive part of your body. And now that shirts and things are rubbing up against it. It's like, what the fuck is that sensation, <laughs> right? My body is like, what is that? Like, what is going on here? I've never felt that before. So these are brand new sensations that my body is trying to learn. The third thing that I wasn't prepared for was long-term scar care. My surgeon and the team prepared me for some scar care, but it seemed like just pretty much right after the surgery, they were like, make sure that you um, massage, um, keep your scars moisturized, um, and then give it a lot of time. But I didn't really understand how much time, I need like pretty straightforward directions and I really didn't get straightforward directions like that. So I kind of thought it was for a couple months then you could kind of cool it with all of this stuff. But I'm 10 months out of surgery right now and if I don't keep my scars pretty actively moisturized every day, massage them every day, I notice a ton of tightness in my scars that can be really, really uncomfortable. For example, I can like turn my body to look in another direction and feel the tension in my scars, which can be very uncomfortable and jarring. And to be completely honest, I really underestimated how uncomfortable the scars can be after some time. Another complication that I wasn't aware of that I am not personally dealing with, but I heard about it when I was doing some research when I had some issues with my scars, um, there's something that's called cording. And it's basically where there's some issues, especially in the armpit area. If you have scars that go up to your armpits, you're more at risk of this. Um, but basically some of the nerves get mixed up and it can send shooting pains down your arm. I watched a video of another trans person who had that experience and, and they were seven years out of top surgery. So there are a ton of complications around your scars and, ch and uh, uh, scar tissue specifically that you need to keep in mind for a very, very long time. I'm going to be much more diligent with my scar care and taking care of them on a daily basis, extending the time of massage so that I can deal with all of that 
underlying scar tissue. The fourth and final thing that I wasn't expecting was changes in dysphoria and insecurities. So I definitely heard that when folks have top surgery, um, they often can have dysphoria and other areas kind of, not, not necessarily manifest, but you, it gives you more room to pay attention to your dysphoria in other places. Some folks will say things like, I didn't have bottom dysphoria, but then after top surgery, I had bottom dysphoria. That's not quite my experience. I had a little bit of bottom dysphoria and now I still have a little bit of bottom dysphoria. Um, one thing that's definitely going on now is I, con I considered uh, bottom surgery a ton. Um, and definitely think that it could happen in the future, but having this surgery and kind of how long it's really taking me to adjust and get comfortable and everything like that makes me a little bit more resistant to getting surgery again on a more sensitive area of my body. Um, so that's kind of what I'm, I'm thinking about that in the future. Who knows exactly what might happen. And in terms of insecurities, um, after I got top surgery, I would look at a lot of pictures of guys who would work out a ton and have like super ripped muscles and like really like full muscular chest and that's definitely what I'm aiming for. Um, but then I would also see, see some comments of, of guys with like really like really flat chests um, and they would say things like, oh, you have a bird chest. And then I was like, oh, fuck, do I have a bird chest now? <laughs> and I found this really kind of humorous because before surgery, I was like, oh man, there's too much chest tissue. And then now I'm like, maybe there's too little chest tissue because I just wish that I was a little bit more, like I looked a little bit more jacked. Um, and I'm trying to be kind to myself. I can kind of get down to myself a little bit, but I do things like work out and I'll do a couple extra push-ups to um, build up my chest muscle a little bit more. And I think that is totally fine if you have personal aesthetic goals to go for them. There's no need to shame yourself or anything for being interested in having a particular aesthetic as long as you're healthy and you're doing it in a smart way. I also really want to know if you have had any of these experiences. Have you thought about these things? Have you considered them? Let me know down in the comments below. And also just a quick pause. Um, if you're not following me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, go ahead and check out the links in the description below and give me a follow. I post a lot of other content on the other sites, so make sure you're up to date on all the stuff that I put out there. All right, now I want to talk to you a little bit about some tips. Maybe you have already had top surgery and you're kind of figuring out how to heal in the best way, or maybe you are doing some research. Hey there, I remember when I was in my research phase, um, so I'm glad you're here. <laughs> um, so you're doing some research or maybe you're about to get top surgery and you're just preparing. These are some great tips, things to keep in mind to help you um, heal the best and prepare the best for surgery. Number one is triple check with your surgeon about the kind of surgery you're going to get at the consultation and afterwards. I think the, I barely even remember what happened in my consultation and uh, I, I wish that I was a little bit more uh, clear with the surgeon about all the things that I said. I've heard so many people say this after they've had top surgery that they wish they were more clear with their surgeon. Um, and you sometimes don't realize how difficult it can be to do that. And I, I struggle with advocating for myself sometimes. So make sure you ask questions, send them an email after the, after the consult to just prep and make sure everything is going the way that you expect it to go. Number two is look out for all of the possible complications and take them seriously. Make sure you ask yourself, if I do get this complication or any of these complications, what help, what support do I need to have in place to help me get through that or to move through that struggle? Some complications you want to be aware of are things like nipple loss or nipple death, cording, as I mentioned earlier, hematomas, which are very common after surgery. I had one. Infection, super common. I had one as well. Some people have extreme hormonal issues after having top surgery, so look into that. I definitely found myself being kind of like, if I put too much attention on the negative stuff, I don't want to like jinx myself or have anything negative happen or obsess about the negatives. And so I kind of avoided looking into complications, but I wish that I had looked into complications a little bit more. So that I was very aware of all of the different possibilities. Don't scare yourself, but just be prepared for the possibilities so that you can support yourself in the best way possible. And you don't beat yourself up like I kind of did, not, be, not expecting some of the complications that came up for me. Tip number three, this is great if you've already had surgery, but be prepared to grieve and mourn the loss of your old chest. There can be a lot about your pre-surgery body that you miss. It's really important that you understand that sometimes grieving is a really important part of healing. Some of the things for me that I'm mourning is my nipple loss and nipple sensation. I'm also missing some simplicity from before. 
um, like, you know, things like having to massage my chest every day, sometimes it gets a little bit annoying. Um, and I can think about not having to do that. And then also in some ways, like I said, with the sensation, that, that, that weird sensation that I'm having, it's almost like my body is mourning. My body is trying to kind of catch up to me and get where I get used to just being in a new body. Number four is to be prepared to give a ton of attention to a part of your body you might have previously dissociated from. I was so disconnected from my chest for such a long time that after surgery, paying so much attention to my chest felt really uncomfortable. I felt really weird sometimes having to touch my chest all the time and pay attention to it every day. And sometimes I just, even now I just like will get annoyed at myself like, man, this is so annoying. I always have to, massage my scars and put stuff on my scars. But the thing is, on, like on the positive side, it's allowed me to be more connected to my body in a way that I've never been able to do before. And in a way that I've never had to do before. I'm like required right now to be present with myself. And for that, I'm honestly grateful. Even though embodiment and present with yourself can sometimes be challenging or difficult. And my fifth and final, I think most important tip is remember that surgery, any kind of surgery is very traumatic for your body. It's just really important to remember that uh, the fact that there's kind of trauma to the body that was done, it can make healing more layered and sometimes make it take a lot longer than you expected. Pretty much the whole thing that I wanna get out here is that acceptance, being present with yourself, being gentle and kind to yourself, is one of the most important tools that you can have to help you get through this whole process. Um, a lot of my kind of self-blame and rumination and stuff just made this process more difficult. So if you have a, a support person, a therapist, counselor, coach to help you work through some of these things, that's a great, great thing to have to help get you through all of these struggles. I wanna thank you so much for being here and for watching this long. Remember my socials and everything are down there. Um, I'm also a life coach, so if you are working through some of these issues and you wanna chat with someone about them, go ahead and book a free discovery session. Once again, I'm so glad that you are here. Um, make sure you drop that good old heart emoji in the comments if you made it to this part in the video. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for being here and supporting my work. Love you. Peace and love.